I set off early this morning from my home in Somerset down to Dover, caught the Eurostar into France and then made the short two hour journey down to the glorious Abbey Lakes. I'm booked to fish on Fox and to my surprise after speaking to Dave there's actually only myself and a couple of other people on here which is absolutely astonishing considering the stock of the lake and how close and convenient it is from Calais. But nevertheless I'm here and there is a boatload of big fish in the lake behind me. I've had a good mooch round and you'd have probably seen that one show there. I've had a good mooch round, um, spent a couple of hours having a look around and because it is quite quiet I have seen quite a few fish dotted around the whole lake but the peg that I'm stood in now, which is where I've decided to settle in, I've actually seen the majority of the fish here. Um, it's in the middle part of the lake, so it's a good area, fish can be passing through. Like I say, there's no one else booked on, so I can move should I need to move, but for now, the van's parked in here, I'm going to unload the kit, and I'm absolutely itching to get the rods out. So, as is always the way, the, uh, wherever I go in the world, the solid, the solid bag bucket is always in the, is in the van or the suitcase. And uh, yeah, I mentioned that I seen fish dotted around the swim, not really in any particular area. And um, just sitting here setting up, and I noticed two or three fish that were crashing in the same sort of area, about three or four rod lengths out, um, just sort of between me and the next peg, really single grain of plastic corn, solid bag full of 2.3mm pellets and I flicked it out and uh, yeah they carried on showing over the top. No liners, nothing and um, it's in quite a few tench as well and I'll be totally honest with you it, it started sort of bobbing up and down and uh, sort of had a laugh and a joke to Harry and said oh it's typical, tench straight away and I picked it up and uh, it's actually a rather heavy tench, which I think isn't actually a tench. So I'm going to concentrate because it only takes one bite to make a session. And this has literally been out there probably 10 minutes. And as you can probably see, if you look behind, I still haven't even got a bivvy up. It's literally vans behind the swim. And uh, yeah, the sort of match mentality of getting the rods out straight away has, has come up trumped yet again. So. I'm going to concentrate because you never know what could be on the end of it. The first one is in the net. Yes! What a result. Always nice to get the first one just to settle the nerves. Not that I ever feel any pressure, but it's always nice to see one sat in the bottom of the landing net. There he is, 40 pound, six ounces, the Fox Lake Miracarp. And if there was ever proof that if you're going on a session abroad or a big session in England, that then first couple of hours when you're thinking about setting your base camp up, always have them solid bags in your bucket and chuck them out because a fish like this has made my session and I'm sure you'll agree, it'll probably make one of your sessions as well. It's absolutely awesome. Couple of hours in, let's hope for a few more of these. Well, it's the end of the first day, or should I say coming to the end of the first day. 
I'm absolutely over the moon to have caught one and for it to be a 40 pounder as well. Gone a little bit against what I'd normally do tonight. Rather than fishing three rods on a spot, I'm putting two rods on a baited area, sort of out at 15 rod lengths. And where I caught that fish from earlier, I've had a little lead around. Notice that it's a little bit shallower than where I'm fishing in the main body of water. And I just had a little lead around just to find the clearest area possible. And I've taken the solid bag off um, and I've just put a hinge stiff bag there. The reason for that, there's a lot of tension here. There's a lot of tension patrolling up and down the margins. If I chuck a solid there, and it gets done by a tension in the middle of the night and I don't know, I could effectively be fishing with a single grain of plastic corn. So 16 mil pop up, nice, decent, big fish rig. That's gone out there, 10 spots over the top and that's just gonna be left alone now. So that done a bite earlier on. There's a lot of fish still crashing around in the margins and I'm confident that's gonna do, you know, that's gonna do another bite as well. But as the day's sort of drawn on and it's got a lot cooler, there's a lot more fish started to show and become a lot more active. I think in the day they're up in the margins, shallower water, um, I mean the water temperature is, is like a bath, it's sort of 26, 27 degrees, but overnight I think the fish have started to push out into the middle of that, you know, clearly you can see that they have now started pushing out, so I'm going to put some more bait out on the baited spot. I haven't actually caught a fish off of it yet, I've already given it a full bucket, but I'm going to give it another 10 spots because it's what I would do anywhere else, it's no different coming to here and if the fish are out there, the bait's sort of 14, 15 foot below them, by putting a bit more bait out there it just gives a bit of fresh scent in the peg and hopefully it draws a few fish down. So, yep, put a few more spots in and uh, have a little tidy up in the swim and I think we'll get some dinner on the go. And yeah, have a nice early night. Last night was uneventful to my surprise. Um, I stayed up till sort of half one, two o'clock this morning and they was actually showing right over me. But, you know, you can look at it two ways. Yes, we are here to catch carp, but also once I went to bed, I had a good night's kip uninterrupted. So up early this morning, I'm set up pretty much cent like central in the lake. Um, so there's a lot of water to my right, a lot of water to my left. There isn't a lot of anglers on here, which is quite surprising really, considering what the complex is. But it's very quiet and I think the fish are, they are a little bit, bit wary of the spod, but I fished here before and I've caught over the spod, so I'm not going to change what I'm doing, but I think with the lack of anglers on here, the fish can easily move away and there's no one to bounce them back. So look this morning, down to me right, uh, pegs one and 18, um, which is the first end you come to. We was told it's a little bit weedy than everywhere else and clearly from my peg, I could see that there was a lot of fish fizzing. So sort of sat the morning period out in the peg that I was in. The carp are still showing in front of me, so I'm confident that there's, you know, there's fish there and maybe they did visit the bait, but just not feed. So tied up a few solid bags, jumped in the van, made the short drive down to this end. And, and yeah, they are, it is quite apparent that there's a lot of fish here. We haven't actually seen many carp showing, so I'm not sure whether they're all carp or they're carp and tench, but three solid bags out on, on these fish here. It only took about 20, 25 minutes to get a bite yesterday when I chucked a bag on them. So. I'm going to give it an hour. If I don't get any liners or no signs of, of, of sort of any indication, then opposite me, we've also seen a few fish showing there. So I'm going to give it an hour here. If nothing's happened here, I'm going to scoot around and hopefully there's a chance of nicking the bite, just chucking solid bags out. Well, as you would have seen, I moved 
to peg two, which as I said was down the right hand side of where I was fishing. Um, gave it an hour there with the bags, nothing. And as I was saying, that there was a lot of fish crashing opposite me in the margin. So we moved around here. I had one chuck with a lead just to make sure it would dunk to the bottom and it did. And I just put a bag left, bag right, and it is absolutely motored off the left hand rod down the margin. And I'm attached to a nice common, it looks like. So yeah, so far both the bites have fell to a solid bag down the edge. And I think potentially after this a move's gonna be on the card. But I'm gonna focus on getting this in. And it literally is almost to the minute I had the bite yesterday, so there's obviously something in that, this middle of the afternoon period, nice and warm. But I mean, that's a lovely common. Um, to be fair, the scales on it are that big, it doesn't look like a common, it almost looks like a, like a fully scaled. But I don't think it is. It's just a real scattered scaled common, I think. And it looks like it's game over for him. And that, is another Fox Lake, I'm not gonna say it, bit of a unit. And uh, yeah, 24 hours about a bite, and it just shows, never give up, always have a little mooch around. And I says we're fortunate enough because there's not many people here that we can actually have a little, have a move around. And normally on a lot of these French venues, you know, you're, they're being booked out and you can't move. But if there is the option to move, don't just sit there and think it'll happen, just go and make it happen. And that's exactly what I've done here. And that is, a rather big comma. Lovely. Spiffing. Carnage. <laughs> unbelievable and I think the lad who's further down the bank is the only other angler on here he's also into a fish and maybe there's a little bit in this middle of the daytime so yeah how it can change around so so quickly thought in to be fair. Mm, could be another 40. Yeah. Well how your day can turn around. <laughs> Just contemplate going down the shop and getting an ice cream as well but I think I'll postpone that idea. Massive massive mouth on this one. Tiny little bit of plastic corn and a little size 5 wide gate beak absolutely embedded right in the side of its mouth, that was never coming off. Nice and basic, fresh out of Oxford. Look at that, another Fox Lake unit, 43 pound, eight ounces. And uh, I'm absolutely over the moon because after catching nothing last night, making the move this morning and having a little dot around with some bags and a few different swims to finally land on a few fish and to get a couple of fish in quick succession with this looking like it's probably the smaller of the two. Absolutely amazing. So yeah, the session weren't made yesterday, it certainly is now. Oh, 
Look at that, glistening away in the afternoon, French sun. 42 pound, eight ounce, Abbey Lakes Common. My third bite of the trip, all three fish over 40 pound. The sun shining, that is exactly what you come to Abbey Lakes for. Awesome. T-shirt competition. Oh. Look quite ripped to be fair. The reason I'd come to somewhere like Abbey is purely because the fishing's absolutely brilliant. The staff here are friendly. It's clean. You can park behind your swims and you're fishing for big fish close to Calais as well. Only 130 miles the other side, which to have this sort of fishing on almost an open access really, because you don't have to book on week bookings. So there isn't like, you don't have to go onto a calendar and there's like a week's, you know, there's a week booking on here and you're, you're turning up on a Saturday doing a draw. You can literally turn up whenever you want. Once you're booked on, you can choose how many nights you do. So if you want to do two nights on Fox, two nights on Heron and a night on Attila, you can do that, there's no objection for you to move in. And I quite like the freedom of that and not coming to a lake with 10 or 15 guys on. Because, you know, coming away ab abroad is, an exp is a big expense to anyone. And if you're booking on a lake and they're running it on a draw system when you get there, you know, anyone that goes carp fishing will know that there's always going to be better swims than others. And before we go, we've spent a lot of money, we've prepared a lot of stuff and the anticipation's always high. And if you get a bad swim, you're down in the dump straight away and the money that you would have spent obviously you're not going to be reaping the benefits because you might not be in a good swim but a place like Abbey if you find that you're say fishing fox and it isn't happening there's no objection for you to go and have a look at heron and there's always fish to be found here I just class this as like the French version of linear you know if you're at home on linear and you're on a lake and you're not happening it's not happening just move there's always people coming and going which is another good thing as well because you know for argument's sake, if the person who's catching a lot of fish on Fox um, is leaving in, in a couple of days, you know, you can go around and you might be able to move in behind there. But if you've all come as a party and you know they're going the same day as you, you know, you're just sat there watching someone else catch. There's always opportunities on a place like Abbey to catch fish, irrespective of the weather. I mean, it's 30 plus degrees now, we've caught fish, but I've also been in here when it's minus 10 and I've caught fish as well. And you're not just fishing for small carp, um, you know, you're fishing for fish right the way up to 70 pound. And probably the biggest draw for Abbey is because it's not always mega busy and you can move around. Well, the sun has finally gone down after an absolutely blistering hot day. Um, it's probably been upwards of 30 odd degrees. Obviously I was in peg six where I started, then had a go in peg two, and I've now moved into peg 15, which is where I'm gonna be spending the night. Caught them two fish earlier on, um, both from down the edge, one down the left, one down the right, and they come in quite quick succession as well. So if they move back through again, I'm hoping with the approach that I've gone for, which is something that I wouldn't normally do, and that's fish three different spots. So. I've got a solid on every one of them um, because that's what I've caught a fish on. So it makes sense that if that's what I've caught a fish on, why change it? Because it's clearly working. One to the left, one to the right, and I've got one straight out in front. But all I've done is I've literally just put two spots um, over the top of them, purely because during the daylight hours, like today, they wasn't in the water for much longer than about three or four hours. But if we go to bed in a minute, they're going to be out there for upwards of like eight, eight nine hours. So little solid bag, you are relying quite heavily on all the little pellets and stuff to still be there. So yeah, I've got a little trap set on each one. Like I say, completely different to what I'd normally do. Normally I'd have three bowstring tight on the same spot. Um, but it didn't work last night. We've only got three nights and I don't want to commit to doing it again and wake up in the morning and find out it hasn't worked. So I'm hoping by doing this that it's going to produce the goods. But so far, so good. Three bites, three fish, three 40 pounders.
unfortunately. Nothing through the hours of darkness. Um, but this morning, woke up quite early, sat there looking out, a few fish showing around. And about half eight, quarter to nine, another rod down the right-hand margin that done a bite yesterday, absolutely ripped off. Um, when I picked it up, it didn't have the sort of same weight as what the other fish have had, but another stunning Fox Lake upper 20. Awesome. And um, yeah, that's that, well, the, the margin area seems to be doing the bites during the daylight hours. So got the good part of the day now and a little bit of tomorrow morning to go. So hopefully there's a chance of one or two more of these. Wherever I go, no matter if it's England, France, wherever, the solid bad bucket is always in the van. And for how small it is um, and what you can put in it and the effect that they can have on your session, which is certainly proved on this trip, the fish that I've caught have all been on a solid bag. I've literally just got a bucket carry-all inside it. It's just a medium-sized bucket. And you don't need nothing fancy for a solid bag mix. Um, you know, don't think you need to add loads of ingredients, oils, powders, liquids, whatever. I have literally got 2.3 mil bloodworm pellets with a sprinkling of krill pellets and all I've got in there is just a kilo and a half of krill powder as well and the krill powder is literally in there because I want to get the bag as tight as I possibly can so when I'm tying them the powder's going in all the little cracks and crevices all the air is being drawn out the bag and you're making a rock hard parcel of bait. Also in there three or four packs of spare solid bags, a um, couple of spools of PVA tape, four tubs, because you can get two tubs in each pocket, four tubs of my favourite bright hook bait. So I've got yellows, oranges, whites and pinks. Um, and then in, in the bucket itself, I've just got a little bit of plastic corn in a little tub. And that is pretty much it. And it takes up no room in the van. And if you leave it in the van for the week and you don't need it, so be it, take it home, nothing's gone off and you've not lost anything. But if you find that your baited spot's not working, put a bag on. And as this is proved, putting a solid bag on has been the difference between catching and not catching. Well, this is the rig I've been using, and it really couldn't be any simpler. First things first, a ready tied straight out of the packet 30 pound submerge leader. On the end of it, we drop off the inline kit. So you've got a little plug that literally just goes onto the swivel, and you've got this almost raw plug type device that pushes into the top of your lead. All you're doing is obviously the fat end of your lead, pushing the plug into it, pulling down the bit that goes in the top, running the leader around the outside of the lead and simply pushing that inside. And what happens then is when you're getting a bite, the plug's pulling out, obviously gravity's pulling the lead down and the lead's coming away and the lead's dropping off. Rig-wise, again, really, really simple. A short four or five inch section of 20 pound reflex camo, braid, no coating on it, a supple, nice supple braid, obviously, because you're putting it inside a bag and you don't want anything in there that can coil or kink, at least with this stuff. If it straightens out, it goes nice and straight. Size four, wide gate beak, nice big hook. Um, I'm not overly fussed really about using a big hook inside a solid bag because the pellets is obviously gonna conceal the hook as best as possible. Nice big hook, but once it goes in, it isn't coming out. And then you'll see hook bait, extremely simple piece of plastic corn. Now this is a fairly big bit of plastic corn because all I want it to do is to take the weight out of the hook and then when the bag opens up, the piece of corn rises above the pellets and it literally taking the weight of the hook. And obviously that is all going inside a solid PVA bag loaded up with my 2.3 mil pellets with a dusting of powder. And that is it, such a simple rig that I would use anywhere in the world. I catch loads of fish on it in England and it's proved that it's worked fantastic out here in France as well. I came from the mud, there's dirt on my hands, strong like a tree, there's roots where I stand, oh I've been running from the law, hope they won't shoot me down soon.
Well, it's the final evening now. Uh, I've moved. This is the third third night and the third different swim that I've been in uh, overnight. The rods are out there bang on and to be honest, fishing a little bit more sort of what I'm used to. I've got two rods tight on one spot and another rod on another spot. A little bit of bait over the top. I haven't gone mad on the bait, have only got the one night left. Don't want to go filling it in because there isn't really enough time to get them competitively feeding. I just want to nick a bite and then hopefully there might be an option for, you know, for maybe one or two more through the night should I be lucky enough to get one early on. But you know, even if I don't catch anything else, it's been an absolutely fantastic trip for the length of time that I've been away, for how many fish I've caught, for the size of fish that I've caught. You know, it is, is, it is absolutely incredible. And to catch one tonight, you know, the, the final night really would be the, you know, the, the, the cherry on the cake, so to speak. And it'd be even better if one of them was 50 pound, but that may be pushing it too much. But yeah, the rods are out, it's looking absolutely bang on. I've got a pizza on the go down here, so I'm going to have that. Hopefully, get my head down to be rudely awoken by a buzzer. I'm not sure what time of the night it is, but we are into another fish. And uh, quite reassuring really, because uh, this one's come over a spotted area. So after not catching anything over bait, and moving and going back to fishing over bait, it is rather nice to be playing one. And uh, yeah, it doesn't doesn't feel a bad fish either, to be fair. I don't, I don't think you're going to catch anything tiny anyway when you're out here, but yeah, it feels all right. I thought it did. It's just come off. Yeah. I thought it did. Done like a dink. Yeah, made like a tiny little dink. <laughs> that real subtle. <laughs> well, that's typical, isn't it? Wait all that time to get a bite on the bottom over a baited area. And uh, balls it up. out because I ain't got a lot of time left. Clock's ticking and they're absolutely churning it up out there. Might only get one more chance. I didn't think we was going to get another chance after I lost that one to be honest. Well after a disastrous wake up call of losing one, not far out from the net, um, just had another one. Looks another good fish as well, over bait on a 360 rig but haven't got a lot long left of the session now and I spotted last night and if it's taken till now to get them on it, I don't really want to go topping up with literally three, four hours of the trip to go. So exactly the same clip, take the 360s off, solid bags on, just for the final few hours, got a parcel of food out there. It's enough to get a bite, where a single might not be enough to get a bite, but I know this is enough to get one bite. So all the rods are still out at the minute. I've just really chucked the one, I just had the fish on. The other two are still out on, on 360s, but this one, I'm going to tie two solid bags up now quickly, bring them in, wrap them up, chuck them out and hopefully there's chance or two of, you know, of, of another carp before we go home, which I'm confident there is because the weather's a lot different today. No sun, overcast, bit of rain. Carpy conditions, so to speak. Netted him with a bit of weed, but nonetheless, he's in the net. Well, we just put the rods back out after getting them two, and uh, 
no sooner have they hit the bottom, they, they've actually gone again. And uh, not just one this time, I've actually got a double take. This one's away here as well. I'm just gonna loosen that clutch off. And then this one's about 35 yards down to the right hand side. So I'm not gonna rush, I'm gonna get this one in and then deal with that one there. certainly feels a little bit heavier to move through the water. Bearing in mind like the fish that I've already got in the net are like probably a couple of 30s and potentially a 40. So, you know, talking about a big fish, they are very big fish already, but you just never know out here what you could be attached to. It's about eight foot out now. Oh my oh good my Lord. God. It's the fully. It's the fully. <laughs> right, now. <laughs> Now my uh, bomber hole is just turned inside out because <laughs> there is a fully scaled in here and uh, yeah I think this is what I'm attached to. It is going like stinkness. I'm not sure how big it is. How big does it normally go Dave? <laughs> how was it? <laughs> Yeah, so, <laughs> so it's quite big this fish. <laughs> I am actually now. Joe, so all the way in it's felt it's a little bit different. It's even worse when you know what fish is attached to the end of your rod. I'd rather have not seen that just then. <laughs> oh, look at that. What a fish. There's a god up there. I'm not a religious type, but can start praying at some point in your life, can't you? He's close now. Go on, you mother... Yeah! <laughs> yes! Yeah. Yes! Oh. oh! I don't know what to say. <laughs> well, according to Dave, it's the first time he's been out this year and it's one called the Big Fully. And it is a Big Fully. <laughs> oh my God. What a fish that is. <gasps> oh my days. <laughs> that is immense. <laughs> what a way to end that is. Double take. Five bites, <laughs> five bites, yeah. Double take and I let it run. That was probably running for like five or 10 minutes. Um, just shows, doesn't it? You never know what's on the end, I suppose. The full 40 of the trip, four 40s, could it possibly get any better? Definitely the last fish of the trip. And I know that because I'm not casting back out. From the sublime <laughs> to the ridiculous. <laughs>
to end the trip. Oh yes.